Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's Kirsten and it's the start of yet another weekly vlog. I'm going to give you a quick recap of what I was reading at the end of last week because I have now finished one of those books since I last updated last week and that was The Furies by Katie Lowe. Honestly, this is a book that I found to be a bit disappointing. I felt there could have been so much more potential within this book but it just wasn't executed in a way that could have made it much better. I still need to put it through Corpile because I finished it very late last night but honestly I'm expecting between a two to three star. We're following Violet as she attends this prestigious school to do her exams before going into university and while she's there she gets caught up in this group of girls who are part of an occult and things start going wrong from there. Honestly the parts about the occult was fascinating, I really enjoyed that. You do get some very creepy scenes within this book which was honestly fascinating but so much of the story is based around parties and doing drugs and getting drunk and peer pressure and it's just it was very frustrating that you had so much of the book focusing on that part and so little of it focusing on the actual occult themes which like I said very disappointing to me especially because there was like a murder mystery element for all of 60 pages and I'm like Honestly, I feel like you could have done so much more of that because the person that the mystery is surrounding, you hear about very early on within the book. And I feel like there should have been more emphasis on that, more about where has she gone, you know, what's happened to her and having that mystery element, except you didn't get it until over halfway through the book and then 60 pages later it's kind of all tied up and done with and I'm like, which is a shame because it was such a late thing to add to the book and then it's over so quickly that you couldn't even really appreciate it and that's kind of how I felt with a lot of this book. There were so many things that were just kind of thrown in there that could have been expanded on, that could have been done better, that you just then didn't really get. I don't mind the way it ended, honestly I like the fact that it kind of leaves you making up your own mind as to whether they were all coincidences, the things that happened, or whether they were actually because of the rituals the girls were doing. So I do find that fascinating, but overall not that impressed. I will give you the star rating that it comes up called part, I'll put it up here somewhere, but yeah I don't, I don't think I could recommend this because I personally didn't enjoy at least 65% of this book. But last week I did start my reread of the Throne of Glass series and I'm now on Crown of Midnight. I started this on Sunday evening and I haven't read much more of it because instead I decided to finish up The Furies because it was getting frustrating and I just wanted it over with. I'm enjoying it, it's a reread. I plan on finishing this up for the last couple of days of September before starting my October TBR, which if you haven't seen that video, then go check that out. I have two different October TBRs, my TBR game and a readathon that I'm participating in. Although to be fair, a lot of the books do cross over so you can kind of choose one of the videos and it will tell you pretty much what I'm reading this month. So that's gonna be fun to start off with and I'm pleased that I get to end the month on a reread that I've been desperately wanting to read for ages because if you didn't see last week's video I do tend to reread the Throne of Glass series at least once a year because it's just a series that I love and I think it's really well done and I like the way that she puts so much into the first two books of this series that has such an impact in the last couple of books and I think that's just really clever writing. I know not everybody agrees and I know not everyone thinks that this is a good series or at least not her best work but I have to admit I do prefer it although the way Crescent City's starting that could could potentially top this I won't lie but I hope you all are having a good week so far and I will catch up with you soon good afternoon I wanted to do a quick stationary haul I don't have a reading update I'm still reading Crown of Midnight. To be fair, I didn't make any progress yesterday. That's not unexpected, simply because Tuesdays I spend it with my partner instead. So, first of all, I got myself some transparent sticky tabs from Paper Chase. I really like these ones, they're really thin. And for those of you that know, I am slowly starting to annotate my books and these tabs are just perfect. Because they're transparent, they don't cover up the words of the sentences, so it makes it very easy to still read if I'm rereading a book. And the fact that they're so tiny means that they fit in and they don't take up so much room. I really love them, I think it works really well and they're only £2.50, so I picked up an extra pack. And I also picked up this journal, so it's a 
dot journal because I do keep a reading journal. I like to note all the books that are on my TBR for the month. I like to put my thoughts on them, my book of the month, the star ratings that I've gave them, the days that I've read. I love all of that. As you would have seen to this clip, I've prepared my October spread already. So it's something I really love doing. However, recently I've found that my notes on books spread just isn't quite enough to give detailed thoughts on the books that I've read so I really want to do a book journal where it's more of a book appreciation spread so I can choose a book that I've particularly loved say like The Beautiful which was my book of the month and I loved that book in September I thought it was absolutely phenomenal but I just didn't have enough space to write all the notes and although I have my book of the month spread I would still love to be able to do a full two page book spread talking about the book, what I loved about it, what I like about the characters and just being able to do a proper spread. Basically I love journaling and I love books and I really want to do something where it's not just recording the books that I read each month and the books I have to read but also being able to go more in depth into books that I enjoy and also for example a book like Rhapsodic where I just felt conflicted because it reminded me of two books that I love but just felt a bit short of both of them which was a shame and just really being able to explore that a bit more. So I went for my favourite colour and that's what I'm going to turn this into and I do want to starting from January start doing some videos on this channel where I'm showing you how I set up those spreads and I will show you a few of these and the spreads that I make for books that I really enjoy if you enjoy that sort of thing. So do let me know in the comments below if that's something you'll be interested in seeing me do some journaling videos because I love seeing them. I think Journal with Chloe, who I'll have linked below, uh, she also has a booktube channel. She's just a massive inspiration and I love her spread. She's got two separate channels. I wouldn't really do that, but I would like to put some of that on this channel if you're interested is a really long-winded way of saying that, I apologise. But I also have some journal and supplies that came in the post, so I wanted to unpack and show some of the stuff that I got. Both of the shops, so they're two Etsy shops, they're both based in the UK, I will have them linked below. I really love them, I think they do really good quality stickers and bits, and their postage is very fast, so. This isn't like sponsored or anything and I have paid for these but I just really wanted to shout them out because they do a great job so they will be linked below. Starting off, so we get a cute little thank you note and I do love the way they package it all, I think it's so cute. I also love to keep all the tissue paper that comes with these because I like to reuse these for my journal spreads. So I did get some washi tape, although to be fair I have loads already so I don't go mad on that. But I did get this cute Hello Kitty one. I just saw it and I thought it was absolutely adorable so I had to have that. I also got this little pack of stickers which I'll show an actual photo of what the stickers look like. But it was just really cute vintage style so I thought why not. Then I got these cute cat stickers not that I needed more cat stickers but they're cute and I also got these ones these are a bit larger I'm not quite sure what journal I'll use them in probably in the book journal rather than my reading journal because I'm not sure actually but I really liked this I liked the cute magician girl aesthetic and I'm hoping I can write on these a bit because I think that would be really nice to do like a title of a book in that space. I think it would be quite cool. And then my next one, I think I'm actually going to keep this packaging as well because I think this will be a really nice background to use. And again, beautiful packaging. I just love tissue paper. I love the fact that I can reuse it. And it's inside even more packaging which honestly I really love it because I can reuse all of this stuff. So I didn't get too much from this shop. This is the first time I've bought anything from this shop but it's looking really good so I think I'll probably buy from there again. And this is just some little note paper that I thought looked really good and again I'll use this in my book appreciation journal. And again just some really cute animal stickers and some bunny ones. So that's it, that's my update, it was just a stationary haul but I really love it and again do let me know what you think about me doing some journaling videos on this channel but as I said it won't actually be till January if you are interested. Good morning, it is a very dreary start to the day but ignoring all of that 
I finished Crown of Midnight last night. It did go into my October read, unfortunately. This was a five star. I really enjoy this book. I think I said it before already in this vlog, but it really is the start of the bigger plot line kicking in, especially towards the end of this book. You find out so many things about the king, how he's managed to gain control so quickly, why he's so ruthless, and obviously the truth about Selena is revealed and there is so much fallout from all of that that is now going to happen in the rest of the books. So the first book is kind of introducing our characters and the second book is kickstarting that plot into gear and I love it. It is very good and as said, a five star read. But I did also start my very first book for October. So I am doing my TBR game, which this was the punishment for as I didn't finish all of my September TBR because I deviated. And it's also the first prompt in the Slayer Fest readathon, which is a Buffy the Vampire inspired readathon hosted by the Continuing Chronicles, who I will have linked below. And this is my book for Willow. So to read a witchy read and the Angel Mage by Garth Nix is a Lilith retelling and we have loads of angels and it's all about people who have the ability to channel angelic power and it's so good. Granted I've only read the prologue and the very first chapter because I didn't start this till very late last night but I'm seriously already hooked. I'm absolutely loving it. I'm really intrigued about the world and about Lilith herself. I think it's going to be a fascinating one and honestly, what a better way to start October than with a Lilith retelling. I just, I think it's great. I'm really pleased that the bookseller in Waterstones recommended this to me because I think it's going to be amazing and as I said I'm already hooked after just the prologue and the first chapter so that's a good start. But as per usual I do need to get to work. I'm hoping to read a decent chunk of Angel Mage tonight because I am a wee bit behind on starting my TBR and I have about 13 books to read this month so I need to get a move on. But as I said I need to quit the rambling and get to work. Okay, okay. I have read quite a decent chunk of this. I read 200 pages last night. I'm almost halfway through, but I'm baffled. <laughs> like, I won't lie. I went into this thinking it is a Lilith the retelling, as I've said on this vlog, as I've said on my TBR videos, because on the back of this book, it does say, a century ago, Lilith crept into the empty sarcophagus of St. Margaret, fleeing the fall of Eustera. Now she has emerged from her magical sleep still looking no more than 19, to, re to renew her single-minded quest to find her lover, Panalel, the Archangel of Ysteria. Says Lilith, it is spelt differently, it has an A in the name, but I genuinely thought it was a Lilith retelling because the original story of Lilith is that she was the first wife of Adam from the story of Adam and Eve, but that she refused to be seen as lesser than Adam and so escaped the Garden of Eden. Angels went to bring her back but she fought them and won and the story kind of takes a twist from there. All stories basically say she becomes this evil person. Some of them say that a fallen angel fell in love with her, some of them say that she ends up being the consort of the devil, so there's a few different variations that then change from there but the end result is you have Lilith, and angels and when I saw that this was Lilith and we have angels and she's trying to bring back her lover who is an archangel and in this society is seen as a fallen angel it all made sense to, as a Lilith retelling and the first 50 pages of this book kind of supported my theory on that because we do have this country called Ysteria who's collapsed because their archangel left them and Lilith had a lot to do with that or at least it seems that way and then we see her as she's woken up over a hundred years later and she is one of the most powerful mages. Now a mage in this society is someone who can call upon an angel using an icon and the angel comes to them, does their bidding if it's within their power to do so and only if the human is strong enough to keep them there. However, as payment for this, the human has to give up some of their lifespan. Now, depending on the level of angel that is called upon, this could be a few hours to a few years. It really is dependent on the angel. However, Lilith does not have to pay this price. Instead, she has an ability where she can absorb the angels into herself and she's reached this near immortality state and she 
she has complete control over all angels, her will is unbreakable and she never has to pay the life force of summoning an angel. So she's ridiculously powerful and she's hell-bent on bringing back her lover. To me, that seems like a loose retelling of Lilith, seems freaking interesting. Then we have 100 pages after that first 50 pages of meeting these four humans that Lilith needs to bring her lover back. And honestly, this is where some of the descriptions and stuff got a bit confusing for me. It was a bit too overly done in places about the world and some of the politics of it all. You just, I felt like you just didn't really need to know half of what was being told. The end result of those 100 pages is that we have four people, one who is a cleric, one who is a doctor, another one who is a musketeer in training and another one who is an icon maker and those four end up going to the same place for various different reasons and when they meet up they all feel like they've known each other their whole life but they've never actually met each other before and that's basically their story and then all these perspectives are converging together Lilith is starting to make movements to get in hold of these four people and it goes from there and honestly from the 200 page mark I can see the pace picking up because it did start to but I was a bit confused because there was a lot being thrown at me in terms of information about the world these four perspectives it was partly interesting but honestly I much preferred Lilith's and I was just getting very confused as to where this was going so I did something I don't normally do and that is look at Goodreads reviews before I finished the book and I now I'm even more blimmin' confused because the Goodreads reviews were saying that this is a Three Musketeer tribute slash retelling and now I'm even more baffled because okay I'll be honest I don't really know much about the story of the Three Musketeers I think I watched a film once when I was very young at my nan's house and I don't remember much of it but I'm pretty sure there's not angels in the Three Musketeers and there's definitely not someone called Lilith so I'm very confused as to what this story is and even it being a Three Musketeer retelling not all of these people are musketeers so I'm not even seeing how that works I'm very confused it's a very feminist story it's all the women hold the place of power so the cardinal is a female the queen holds more power than the king in this society all of the captains of the guard are all female things like this so it's very feminist which is nice to see but I'm so baffled by this world, like there's been so much information chucked at me and now I'm very confused as to whether it's even a Lilith retelling like I originally thought. So if you've read this book, do let me know, or if you know the Three Musketeers story, again, let me know. Are there angels in it? Does this sound like the Three Musketeers? Because I've got no idea. Either way, I'm going to try and finish this up over the weekend. I've got just over 300 pages left, so as I said, a little over halfway left to go. Hopefully the ending makes more sense because right now I'm just a bit confused as to what this story is meant to be. It's time to wrap up this vlog. It's now Monday and I did finish Angel Mage by Garth Nix across the weekend and yeah, this just isn't for me. It came out as two stars. I was really disappointed. As I said from the start, this started off really strongly. I absolutely loved it, but the parts where we actually have Lilith in just very few and far between and the parts with our four other main characters were just full of posturing and arguing and yes there could be an argument made that it is meant to be humorous however I just wasn't interested in that because I went into this wanting to know about Lilith how she can do the things that she can do and that never got explained and the ending of this was such a letdown it was unreal so yep just two stars from me. It's just not something I was interested in, especially when you have pages upon pages of describing where the tents sit because the Queen's Musketeers cannot be near the Cardinal's Guard and ca they cannot be near the King's Men and they cannot. And it's just like, really? We're going to be this extra because all the different factions of the guards all don't like each other because they all don't serve. Like, it was just really like, I don't care. Like, I just genuinely don't care about any of this. And then, I just... Mm. Either way, this wasn't for me, unfortunately. Not a great start to October, but at least I have finished one book for both my TBRs, so that's done out the way. But do let me know what your first read of October has been and how you're finding it or what star rating you gave it if you have finished it. And as always, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. All my social media links to my Instagram, Goodreads and Twitter will be linked below. And I'll catch you in the next video.